Welcome to this week's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. If you've been following along the past few weeks, you know I have been talking a lot about the importance of messaging so that your audience can hear you and that you kind of stand out in the sea of all of the yous who are online. We've been talking about getting clear, knowing your audience almost better than they know themselves, mirroring back to them what they need and want to hear so they can see themselves in your marketing. It's a foundational piece of marketing that not enough people really dive into. Today, I am bringing you a conversation with my friend, my colleague, my business bestie, Claudia Schalks, who is in the Netherlands. And she and I actually meet every single week on Mondays for accountability, working on each other's businesses, feedback, support. And it's just an incredible opportunity for me to talk with, talk through everything in my business with somebody. Claudia and I actually are putting together a program this summer called Your Personalized Marketing Toolbox, because we have seen so many people struggling with the marketing side and the content side. So we've created a program to mash those two things together. And in eight weeks, you walk away with all of the marketing assets and the knowledge so you can keep going in your marketing to make it much simpler, easier, and more effective. And Claudia has been in the marketing space for 20 years. And so her way of approaching things is always much more, um, oh my God, it's much more subtle than mine is. It's always so much smarter than mine is. So I'm really excited to bring her on to talk about this. We're going to take this idea of your audience, your ideal client, your perfect buyer, all of those things, because they're not the same person. Your audience member is not the same person that is your buyer and your buyer isn't the same person as your ideal client. It's really very nuanced in understanding who is in your audience and how to convert that person eventually to become a customer or a client. And so we're going to break down some myths about this and some things that you're going to want to walk away thinking about in your own business with your own people that you're speaking to in your marketing. So Claudia, thank you so much again for your time and your energy and your expertise. Thank you for inviting me to talk about this topic, which, you know, I'm very passionate about. I know it's kind of the foundation of your entire business. Can you talk a little bit about your business? Definitely. When I work with my clients, the first stop in my roadmap is uh, their ideal client. It's understanding who their ideal client is. How does this person think? How does this person talk about their problem, their possible solution or goals? And what are the drivers that this person has towards the solution? When you have this picture, you can really, you have a very solid marketing asset that helps you to um, also to fine tune your message, to fine tune your offers, to know what you have to write about. So definitely if there is, there is something laying at the very base of your marketing is your ideal client. I, you know that I agree, but I also know that my audience is rolling their eyes right now going, oh my God, I did this three years ago. I did the ideal client profile. I have niche down. I don't want it. Like it's the most unsexy part of doing marketing. And I am totally with you. It's boring. (laughs) It's boring. And what makes it boring is that you get an incredible amount of information and insights and you don't know what to do with those insights. So for instance, Let's suppose you're proactive enough and you do interviews with your clients, which you should be doing regularly, you know, to take the pulse of how are are your services going, getting ideas, et cetera, et cetera. But let's suppose you are doing these interviews and you get all these insights, then you are like, okay, and what now? And you get this overwhelming feeling that, okay, I have all this information. What do I do with this information? How do I interpret it? How do I translate it to my business and my solutions? And that's one of the things uh, that I teach my clients and we will be doing in in the life experience in the marketing toolbox is showing you how to have all this information in an overview so that you can consult it every time you need to create something or you want to develop a service or you want to write a web page or you're bringing people to your team to make sure that everybody's looking at the same picture. It's so true. It's the foundation for everything that you're going to do in the future. And I love that you said also it's important for when you're bringing team members on because then they know the ethos of your person that you're trying to talk to, the reason behind what you're choosing to do in your business. It's so important. And I also want to just be really transparent here. I am in the middle. Well, I'm not even in the middle yet. I'm about to dive into doing um, these interviews and getting to know my audience because I believe that since 2020, 
and 2021, and now we're halfway through 2022, that the marketplace has changed so deeply and that my audience's needs, which I understood really well in 2020 and 2021, it has shifted for them. And I want to know what they're thinking. So I'm about to, I'm doing the walk that I'm going to be asking people to do that we're going to be asking people to do in our program. So I want everybody to understand you don't do your quote unquote target market research once you don't find your niche or your ideal client once it's really an evolution definitely yes and it's also um, a way to be ahead of the changes that you will feel as a business owner where you want to take your business to you know because at some point you will say like okay i am tired of helping people doing this there must be something else so knowing that you can be ahead and you can start identifying possible venues where you can take your business to, to to grow it but also start seeing the signals that the market is shifting yes. and going towards that. And start seeing those shifts before it gets painful and you're not selling anything or nobody's responding yeah. to you. So, okay, I hope we've convinced people that first of all, this is an important thing, even though it's very unsexy and it can be overwhelming and it is time consuming. Like we're not lying about that. Those are truths, but they make, they kind of open the floodgates to, to making marketing yeah. much easier. So Definitely. the, the second save thing- time, save time, because once Ultimately. you have- a clear picture of your ideal client, every time you bring somebody on board, whether it's a web designer, a a content creator, your your VA, whoever, you only have to give this person your client overview. You don't have to tell the story. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. So it's it's also very practical and extremely time saving. Yeah, yeah, that's true because it also helps you with your brand messaging, your content, um, how you introduce yourself at a networking event, etc. That's so yeah. true. So let's start with some. Let's start unpacking some of the m- mistakes that people might be making besides mm-hmm. the mistake of not doing this work. Tell me what we need to know at the really foundational. Like, what are some things people could walk away from this podcast and be able to do? Well, one thing I think it's very important is the difference, as um, you have also mentioned in several different platforms, is that your audience is not necessarily your ideal client, Mm -hmm. okay? So your ideal client is the person you had in mind when you created your service. Mm -hmm. And what's incredible is that so many reliable sources talk about the ideal client as a fictional character with real needs. I mean, that's an oxymoron. You, are, you can be a fictional character with real needs. No, there's no way. But I am, I am sure that everybody of us who have a service, we had somebody very specific in mind, whether it was ourselves or people like ourselves. And that is your ideal client. You can have buyers of your product or service mm-hmm. that might look like your ideal clients, but they are not, they don't fulfill the requirements. And your ideal client is a complete picture of a person that has pains and has goals and has objections, but also complies with things that are important to you as a business owner. That Can you give me an example? Align- well, that go in alignment with your values. For instance, okay. people who work with me or people that I consider as clients, they need to be transparent. They have to know that they need to communicate. I want them to pay on time. I don't want to be behind people reminding them to pay. That's important for me. You know, I also want people who is willing to put the work because that's also important to me is that you reach results and I can help you and do a lot of handholding. But if you're not putting the work, we won't get there. So that's such a good I'm, you just brought to mind for me a client I used to have a couple of years ago who I thought was an ideal client, but she kept coming to our sessions with like, she would have had, she would have made huge decisions without like, not that she would need my permission, but we wouldn't talk through it. So she would make a huge decision like hiring a marketing director, for example, or hiring somebody to work in her business as a trainer. And I had no idea that that was part of the plan or that there was um, really important information about her business that was very nuanced that I had no understanding of because she wasn't forthcoming with it. So she was a client, but it wasn't ideal in yeah. that way. That's what yeah, I love for, that point. Yeah, for instance, you can have people who buy your services, especially when you have an online course that you're not uh, choosing one by one to, to be participants, you know? or something that's more massive, 
uh, those are people that buy the product or, or the service and usually don't complete the course, they fall along the way, you know, they, and those yeah. are buyers. They buy your product, but they are not necessarily getting the benefits from your product because they are not doing the work or yeah. the, there is not a, a full match between what you're offering as a product or service and what this person is looking for. So is so, it okay to have some of these people sprinkled in your business? Like we can't only have all ideal clients. It's just not the no, way the world definitely, works. Definitely. And for instance, I work one-on-one. -on -one, so my chances of having more ideal clients is more uh, concrete, more narrowed down. If you have more something that's more massive, it's more difficult. You, Of course, your percentage of buyers might be equal or slightly bigger than your ideal clients. Right. But buyers that are aware for instance, oh, I bought this course, but I wasn't ready for it, or, um, you know, I am, I am not doing the work, they can still be ambassadors of your product. You know, they can still say, um, I didn't take advantage, but I didn't do the homework, but Jen is the best person there is for content. And if you are in the content hamster wheel, you have to work with Jen. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there, there is, there are disadvantage, disadvantages, but, you know, you want Idea, more ideal clients than buyers, or at least to be very clear, especially if you have a membership, that if you're not getting everybody, you know, taking advantage, that you understand that part of it is not precisely you that you're not delivering, but that people that joined are buyers and not ideal clients. Right. So I want to talk a little bit about when we start talking about this ideal client, audience member, perfect buyers, all of these different elements of our audience or the people we're eventually going to work with, uh, inevitably the word niche comes up and some people rage against the word niche and don't want to do it. And some people, it makes them feel safer and it really helps them. So I just want to talk about what do we need to walk away with today to help us understand how to meet our ideal clients better in our content and in our marketing and how does niching relate to that? I think that, that a big conundrum we have when we are assessing our clients or ideal clients is that many times you find yourself with more groups or more types of people that your service could be good for right mm -hmm. and then you feel this thing that if you choose for one you're letting the other one go mm -hmm. and then what you try to do is you you keep the two targets or you know I could help, I don't know, um, moms, let's suppose I want to lose weight, so I could help new moms that want to shed the baby fat, and, but I could also help um, women that want to look like they are in their 20s when they're in their 40s, okay. because the process is the same. Yes, okay? right, right, right. But the driver for each of these groups to take action is different. Mm -hmm. And that's when things start to go awry, you know, yes, yes. because the driver that most the, the new mom with baby fat most probably is that when she looks at herself in the mirror, she can't recognize her body, that her marital life is hurting mm -hmm. and that all her guard drop from before becoming pregnant now looks like a potato bag with legs, you know, <laughs> I know oh, very unkind words, but you get a picture. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, the driver of this person that let's say is going to the reunion party after 20 years is vanity. Mm -hmm. So you need to talk to, you know, you want people to tell you that time hasn't passed. So the, the language you're going to use is completely different. Yes, the messaging, that's what it comes down to. One that's of my favorite examples that you like to give is the 70 year old. So if your if your niche was, I help 70 year old men, whatever, right? Like you're, and then you show me that picture of ah. Prince Charles <laughs> versus Ozzy Osbourne. It's like, yes. oh, your niche, we don't need, we don't need to focus on demographics when we're talking about your audience, your ideal client, your perfect buyer. Like we're not yes. talking about demographics. Yes. You can say that the niche is the larger group of people who okay. could, could eventually become ideal clients. Okay. So it's, and there, the, that's the demographics will tell you, you know, people 50 years old uh, with the, so much income living in a castle, men, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where the O.C. Osborne and Prince Charles, 
comparison comes because they have exactly the same demographics. Yes. Okay. In an inner circle, then you have the buyers. So people who is closer to what you have to offer, yet not perfect. Mm -hmm. And in the very center of it, you have your ideal client. So the people you had in mind when you created your product or service, which also are in align with your values and with everything else you, have, you bring to the table. So that's the way, that's the way you can see it. Yes. That's super visual. I love that. So let's like, let's implement this right here. So if we were talking about the people that we want to help inside your personalized marketing toolbox, uh -huh. who is the, how would you do that with niche and uh, ideal client, demographic, okay. ideal client? Um, solopreneurs who have been in business, who have a business up and running. Okay. You know, that's the niche. Service, ideally service-based. Yes. They need to speak English because we're living, we're giving the, the, the classes in English. Mm -hmm. They need to have internet connection. <laughs> okay. I never would have thought of those last two things. <laughs> and they need to have a feasible business. Okay. So that is not a hobby, but a feasible business. Okay. So their business has been validated. It's not like, yes. it's not the germ of an idea. Yes. So, Love that. okay. Then you go narrow down. Then you say, okay, this is people that have strictly a service-based business, not, not retailers, not, uh, you can think, yeah, you can think course creators as well, but you know, and then you could eventually, <coughs> if you really want to niche to, to zoom in, you could say people who work one-on-one, -on -one, for instance, they okay. are ideal people for our program, okay. but also okay. people who works like you with small groups like masterminds and memberships can benefit from this. So people who have, then we go in this in, uh, inner circle, mm -hmm. people who think and feel they have put a lot of time and effort in marketing their business and yet they don't have results. Okay. Yes, yes. So they say, I've done everything the gurus say and still the, it's costing me so much time and effort. I don't enjoy it anymore. Yes. People who say I attract clients, but they are not ideal clients. That's the people that will benefit. I want people, people to listen and say, understand that what you're doing now is describing. You're not like checking off boxes. You're literally holding up a marketing mirror for people to say, that sounds like me. Those are qualities yeah. I have. That's a description I fit. Yeah. And then you you say, okay, then you, as a, as a listener, you don't say, uh, oh, that could be me. You say, that's me. Yes. That's me. Yes. And the last and not least important is if you want to step off the hamster wheel of content creation and know what to create content about and knowing everything and all people, even more importantly, is people who want hand-holding, want experts looking at their business. So they don't want a one-size-fits-all right, or, right. you know, general course, you know. And they want implementation. So yes. that makes our people. So the way that I, I don't know the, you know, I'm not terribly visual, but the visual that's coming to my brain right now is almost like a cell, like with the membrane on the outside and then the fluid on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the nucleus and this nucleus yeah, is exactly. the most yeah. important part. And it's really descriptive. It's not like a prescription. It's very, people have to see themselves in it. Now, if you are listening to this and you're like, yeah, I probably need to up my game with my, knowing my ideal client, knowing my buyer, knowing my audience member, and remembering that those three people are not always the same, remembering that it's on a continuum and we constantly have to do this work and feeling like you meet that description that Claudia was just giving, the personalized marketing blueprint um, toolbox is going to be a really helpful blueprint for you. It's really going to, we take you by the hand. It's a lot of implementation. It's a lot, it's two pairs of eyes on your stuff for eight weeks and we are starting it's a in small June. small group it's a small oh, that's group right. you will have community you will have people you can exchange but you will also have attention individualized attention on your on, on your business you will right. grow from this yes so if you are interested in learning about that program, go to jenliddy.com slash toolbox. That's all one word. And you'll find out more about whether this is a great program for you. We only have room for 10 people and we're starting out by telling you about it and we'll be reaching out to our 
uh, to our network, but we wanted to have this conversation because there's a bigger conversation here about, do you know your audience well enough? Do you know your ideal client well enough? And are you speaking to them? If And there's there's symptoms if, if you're not speaking to them. You're not seeing conversions. You're not seeing connections. You're really struggling with your marketing. What are some of the other symptoms that you would say they're struggling with if they don't have their this work done, Claudia? Well, definitely they don't attract ideal clients. There is scope creep, you know, clients oh, yeah. come from one idea and, and, you know, then you have to refund money and you enter in that vicious circle. Um, clients ask you for things that you didn't promise because it's not clear or, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Um, and of course, conversions, you know, visits to your website or reactions on, on the posts you do, mm-hmm. or it's all... It starts with an ideal client profile. We will yeah. these days put some more list of symptoms so that you really know what's what's going on and where where are your problems in your marketing. Yeah, that's what we're going to unpack in the toolbox uh-huh. program. So anyway, I really hope people have found a nugget here to get them thinking about doing this work, returning to this work if they have already done it, moving away from focusing so hard on that I help 55 year old Jewish men to blah, blah, whatever it is really like moving away from that kind of messaging and moving into a more descriptive message where people uh, resonate and see themselves. And um, again, if you want help with this, go to jenliddy.com slash toolbox and uh, we can get our eyes and hands on it for you. Claudia, Especially anything else you want to add? when you say what you do, people roll their eyes I and know. the conversation falls into kind CPR, then you need this course. Yes, yes. Thank you, Claudia. I always love our conversations. You're welcome. And thank See you, you for listening. And if you have comments, of course, you can leave comments or always go to my website and leave us a comment there too. I'll see you next week when we are coming back to talk about the difference between strategy and tactics. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.